robots aren't just building cars in factories anymore. They're calling strikes in baseball, smiling like humans, and even navigating chaotic environments on their own. We've entered a frontier where perception, autonomy, and human interaction are no longer separate. They're woven into a single powerful story. We've entered a frontier where perception, autonomy, and human interaction are no longer separate. They're woven into a single powerful story. Let's dive into the future of robotics, where machines don't just act, they understand. Perception is the robot's superpower. It's not just seeing, it's about making sense of the world. Modern robots blend cameras, depth sensors, even touch sensors to build a 3D awareness of their surroundings. They process this in milliseconds, because a one-second lag could mean a robot trips, drops, or even harms. The true test? Not the perfect demo. It's what happens in real life. Low light, clutter, unexpected obstacles. That's why the frontier of perception is resilience. Robots that see clearly, even when the world gets messy. Perception feeds into autonomy, the art of turning data into action. A robot sees an obstacle. The planner computes a safe path. The motors execute all in a tight feedback loop. But the real world is unpredictable. So researchers are blending classic control algorithms with AI learning models to handle uncertainty. And here's the kicker. Before robots hit the real world, they're trained in high-fidelity simulations. But bridging that gap between simulated perfection and real-world chaos, that's one of robotics' toughest challenges. Robots don't just need brains, they need manners. A robot's smile or eye movement isn't cosmetic. It's social signaling that makes humans feel safe and understood. On the baseball field, robot umpires bring accuracy but spark debates. Can we trust the machine? Who's accountable for errors? Designers are pushing for transparency so people know what robots decide and why. Because the future isn't just about capable robots, it's about trustworthy robots. These breakthroughs aren't staying in labs. In sports, more accurate officiating, but also new questions about fairness. In service and healthcare, robots that express empathy, raising questions about emotional bonds with machines. In industry, perception autonomy loops boost safety and efficiency, but demand strict safety standards. Every advance pushes us closer to a future where robots aren't just tools, but partners in daily life. So where are we heading? Toward robots that perceive their environment like never before, decide and act under pressure with reliability, and engage with us in ways that feel natural, ethical, and human-centered. The question isn't if robots will be part of our everyday lives. It's how we'll choose to shape that relationship. If you want to stay ahead of this revolution, hit subscribe. Drop a comment with the robot you trust the most. An umpire, a service bot, or a humanoid friend. And share this video with someone curious about the future.
because the frontier of robotics isn't about machines replacing us. It's about machines growing alongside us. At the Interactive Robotics Group Lab, deep inside a research facility at MIT, engineers are training these robot arms to do something that might seem a little basic. The robot is trying to pick up this ball, and then it will try to put it in the sink. But these simple tasks are not really simple at all. The robots in this lab are being trained to use artificial intelligence to intuitively and safely recognize instructions from humans, even predicting what steps they should follow next. Now, I want to nudge it to become a different ball. Okay, so I can just push it in that general direction and then let the robot auto-complete the detailed motions. As if you're teaching this robot a sport, right? If it's not doing the sport perfectly, you can just give it a nudge. What you are seeing here is a human-robot collaboration experience where user only gives super high-level guidance and then the robot auto-completes the low-level granular motions. It's all part of an exploration into what the factory of the future might look like. A place some think won't be totally taken over by robots, but where humans and robots work side by side. Ben Armstrong has spent the last several years studying how AI and automation are becoming part of the American manufacturing landscape. The work of the future task force at MIT got started in 2018. One of the big questions, which is a question on many people's minds, is are there still going to be jobs once these technologies really take off? Is this going to displace all sorts of different workers? And what they found was that these technologies actually move slower than we think. And when they diffuse through the economy, they affect workers more incrementally than severely. This isn't quite how big businesses once imagined the automation revolution would go. In the 1980s, General Motors built what it hoped would be a car plant so automated, it was said the lights could be turned out. And it backfired dramatically. It became the laughing stock of the manufacturing community. You know, the stories were of robots painting each other versus painting cars, of not really knowing which bumper to affix with which body of the vehicle. So it was really a comedy of errors that resulted with this factory of the future. In terms of AI as, as a secret sauce, I think we're still real early. Um, you know, automation is all over the place. I spend a lot of my time writing about Amazon, which been at the forefront of robotics and logistics for more than a decade. Even there, they've backed off the dream they had at one point of a dark warehouse saying, no, listen, we think humans are going to be in the loop for the foreseeable future. We're a long way away from the dream of you know, a robot being able to go from station to station, switching between tasks and kind of monitoring things on its own. In fact, as of 2021, just about 12% of American factories used even a single robot. Asia is way ahead. China alone operates more than 40% of all robots currently in use in factories, according to an industry analysis. Automation and robotics is just one piece of the advanced computing landscape making its way into the manufacturing process. And where AI is showing up, it's often a lot more subtle. So we're here at our line 21. Extrusion line, and we've integrated our Augury AI solution. This is our Augury endpoint. At this Fiberon composite decking plant in North Carolina, an AI enabled device made by a company called Augury helps predict when the machines might break down. Fiberon says the device has repeatedly protected them from costly surprise maintenance. Without the sensors, we can have an unexpected failure in the process. They can occur on the weekend, they can cause unplanned downtime. Saar Yoskovitz is Augury's co-founder and CEO. We have our own sensors that we physically install on the machines, which measure the vibration of the machine, the temperature, the magnetic emissions of a motor, and then we apply very sophisticated algorithms in order to tell you exactly what's wrong and also what you need to do in order to fix it. The best example I, I, I can give is when you drive your car, uh, sometimes you can hear the fan belt squeaking and you know that you need to replace it or tighten it. So different malfunctions have very unique patterns that we learn how to recognize. Today we use very sophisticated algorithms all the way from deep neural networks through reinforcement learning 
all the way now to transformers and the more modern generative AI solutions in order to not just tell you something is wrong, but also help guide the technician in exactly what they need to do in order to fix the, the issues. Augury isn't the only company doing predictive maintenance. It's one of the fastest growing fields in manufacturing AI. Like a lot of AI entrepreneurs, Yoskovitz prefers to see these tools as not a job eliminator, but a job creator, and maybe even as a way to solve a worker shortage problem. One of the questions we always get from people on the production lines is the computer coming in to replace me. And in fact, the goal is not to replace people, it's to arm them with new tools, more modern tools. Instead of looking at all of their thousands of machines every day, now they can focus on the five or 10 machines that actually need their attention. It's hard to overstate the challenges that manufacturing executives and manufacturing companies are facing today. On one hand, they're trying to meet the ever-shifting consumer demands. On the other, they're facing increased tension and pressure over geopolitical issues, growing supply chain resiliency problems, and an aging workforce. So the talent shortage is actually the biggest challenge that we're hearing from, from our uh, partners and customers. Of course, AI is not a panacea. Earlier this year, a survey by the World Economic Forum found that 41% of businesses across all sectors expect to reduce their workforce by 2030 thanks to AI. AI is a tool that you know, companies think might enable it to do a better job, right? Like if a, say a computer vision algorithm can more precisely identify defects in something, you know, that's, that's probably going to make their product better as it rolls off the line. But kind of by definition, a lot of these applications for AI today would make some of the humans who do those jobs redundant. That doesn't mean that the companies won't come up with other things for folks to do or that companies don't have unmet needs they might be able to retrain people for. But if AI isn't job replacement, it's definitely job disruption. Over the last 45 years in American manufacturing, there's been extraordinary job loss. The question is how much of this job loss was due to automation versus offshoring and ge the general decline of American industrial competitiveness. I think that's a big question. At those factories that adopt robotic automation, do you see, for example, fewer machinist jobs? Actually, you see the opposite. How should the robot move to ensure that one, it gets to where it needs to go, and two, it doesn't crash into the human. If the human ever gets too close, the robot should stop. The other side is, well, what do we really want from the manufacturing industry in general? Do we want a growing manufacturing industry that is a bulk of American employment like it was in the post-Second World War era? I don't think that's practical, and I don't think that's necessarily what we want either. What I think the goal should be for manufacturing jobs, but also jobs elsewhere in the economy, is that we want higher quality jobs that people find more satisfying. People are always holding up that straw man of, you know, are we going to recreate the world where you can roll out of high school and roll into a well-paying job with, you know, a retirement attached? And, and that just seems so done in vast swaths of industry in the United States. Companies definitely try to introduce automation to reduce jobs. So I'm not saying that companies Companies buying automation solutions are benevolent. The biggest enthusiasts of automation favor machines over humans because they say humans just introduce error, they take bathroom breaks, etc., etc. But what they don't realize is that humans, in a lot of senses, can see what machines can't. So, yes, there are predictions that there will be algorithms that can improve themselves, but right now, a human in the loop is going to be far superior to a machine on its own.